You are tuned into Lemon Relax. Good evening, you guys. Welcome back to Lemon Relax. <laughs> I hope y'all are doing good tonight. My YouTube family, what's up? My Anchor family, what's up? So we're going to get straight into it because we got a line of um, itinerary, a uh, line of episodes to do tonight. So today's episode or t this current episode is going to be about the rapper No Name and the whole situation with J. Cole. So for those who don't know, rapper No Name, the rapper No Name, um, she, if I had to give you a feel for her sound, we all know who J. Cole is, but just giving you a preface of rapper No Name, she definitely, she gives me like if Erica Badu and Solange had a baby and it rapped. You know what I'm saying? That's what she gives me. Um, I do have quite a bit of her um, last previous or her previous album on my um, iTunes. So I'm familiar with her music. I'm familiar with her stance on capitalism, i.e. all that stuff. Um, but at any rate, just to give you a little preface about her since we all know who J. Cole is. Um, she had called out a lot of the upper echelon and elite rappers back in May, the latter end of May. I want to say it was like May 30th, right before everything that came to a head with George Floyd and all that stuff. Um, excuse me. Um, and, you know, all the rioting, protesting and all that stuff. And I guess J. Cole felt that she was talking about him in that specific tweet. Um, so he put out this song titled Snow on the Bluff. And I have had a chance to listen to the song. Um, as far as the song is concerned, I liked it. It was a nice melody. I definitely do feel like he's talking about her. He literally references her in the song. He doesn't say her name, but he, um, which I was looking for a type of like literal, I thought he would wordplay off of no name. So I, I was looking for that, but I do still feel like the song is about her. Um, and also not even just no name, but his feelings of pressure as far as the black community holding him up to be this great type of martyr. And, um, as far as, you know, consciousness and social awareness goes, and I have my own feelings about that personally, I have a different perspective actually that a lot of people might not have thought of and also might not like, but Hey, I'm not here to be liked. I'm here to tell you my truth and the truth, I, the way I see it. And um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and get on with the tough love. <laughs> so one issue that I see with the way that people hold J. Cole up in such high regards, although he does, you know, he's a more of a conscious rapper. You know what I'm saying? So I understand that when you take on that role, people are going to see you in a certain light. But one thing that people forget is J. Cole is biracial. And we actually have another episode coming out and it's speaking about Shamar Moore. And um, although we do have these great biracials, I don't know where we're at with Jesse Williams now. But as far as um, J. Cole and um, I mean, that's really the only one I can think of. As far as these biracials that speak out um, and, you know speak out with black people in mind and the struggles that black people go through and you know quote unquote fight the power it's great and I'm, I'm glad for their efforts especially if they're genuine I can appreciate that but at the end of the day what a lot of black people are forgetting is these people are bi biracial they are not black even if they look phenotypically black they are not black they are mixed they are biracial as Kaylani told y'all it is okay to call her biracial it doesn't make her any less black it's not trying to invalidate her black card. She don't care. Or her quote unquote black card. They are biracial. They are made up of two races or more. And then y'all sit here and y'all try to, you know, pick and choose who is biracial. And y'all usually, I can understand why people, some people may not even know that J. Cole is, is mixed. You know what I'm saying? Yes, he is light skinned. Not to say that every mixed person is light skinned. But on average, you know what I'm saying? Skin tone wise, he is what a mixed person looks like phenotypically. And, um, but I understand, you know what I'm saying? This is why we need to have these conversations about colorism, featurism, and texturism. Because I understand he's got that nappier grade of hair, that 4C hair, you know what I'm saying? Type 4 hair. So, and, and y'all may feel like that doesn't matter, but, but when we go off phenotype, we go off phenotype when we're judging somebody's race. Whether or not people want to admit that, that's what you do. That's why when y'all see a girl who, you know, yeah, she looks black, but her hair is a little looser or her nose is a little bit more pointier. You ask, oh, what you mix with? 
You know what I'm saying? So there's reasonings behind this thing. And we have a lot of reprogramming that we need to do to our brains. And I think this is a wonderful step right now is first admitting that mixed people are not black. It does not take away from the fact that they have a black parent, but they are not black. So with that being said, I do think that maybe one place where he's feeling pressured, I could be wrong. I'm not sure. But also in that aspect, not just taking up for him, I'm also telling black people to stop demanding so much out of these biracial people. They are biracial. They are not black. So with that being said, even even Tracy Ellis Ross. Yes, she's on blackish, but she's mixed. Z- Yara Shahidi. She's on blackish and grownish, but she's mixed. Now, she is a bit more phenotypically looking black. You know what I'm saying? But she is still mixed. Stop expecting so much out of these people. So that is my first um, area of of critique. And um, another perspective I feel that could be added to the pot. Now, as far as the song itself, like I said, I do like the song. It was nice. Um, However, I have critiques on what he was saying in the song as far as the tone Um, I guess he didn't feel like no name was addressing the people the best way that she could and um, the people that she needed. And I have two issues with that. For one, let's just be real. Let's be real. If you're a black man listening, please do not be intellectually dishonest. When you look on that front line and there's this dude from the grapevine, I'm going to actually go screen record that video now and input it right here. the men when we get shot dead in the street guess who's not on the front lines the whole time's not out there organizing organizing black, black women and gay men are running so if you sit here and tell me that you can't follow leadership from a from a, a gay man or a black woman to be honest frank you pussy because at the end of the day how you can't listen to somebody not no give me a second give me a second give me a second no give me a second give me a second give me a second because if you can't take if you can't take derivative from somebody who's way more far more uh uh uh, uh calculated to run this be all because of who they decide to sex with i'm worried about who you trying to have sex with what is your issue if they gay that has nothing to do with you if they a woman that has nothing to do with you let them leave they trying to they trying to make sure we not shot no more you not doing it you not doing it I I can't do it. You get what I'm saying? A lot of us can't do it. Why? Because we in jail. We fucked up. We got warrants. If we come into contact with the police, we go into jail. So guess no, no, hold on. So guess what happened? So when when they out here and they putting their motherfucking lives on the line, when they dying, hate mail, hate fuck hate mail. When they really dying, there's really a, a number, an astronomical number of black women dead for no reason, popping up dead. A number of gay trans people. Dying. Guess what color they are? They black. So us be us saying, oh, I can't get behind that because you gay. Fuck out of you, pussy. Get behind them and shut up or stay at home. Now, y'all heard that. That was very hood, but eloquently put. It's okay. You know, hood classy. We fuck with it. (laughs) So at any rate, y'all heard what he said. And there was no lies there. And even with the grapevine supposedly being this progressive place for uh, this place for progressives to come and talk and millennials and whatever else, um, appreciate the platform for for what it is. But you heard all the pushback he got. The men was talking over him. So even if y'all ain't saying all black lives except for gay people matter, you don't have to say it. This community is homophobic as fuck. Y'all hear my voice? I know. I done been through the shit. I'm fighting for for a damn battle that ain't even got nothing to do with me. I'm not interested in men, but because of the way I sound, because of the way I look, or because of the way I'm, or because I'm light-skinned, or because of my mannerisms, people attach that to me. You know what I'm saying? So I I feel their pain. I feel it. (laughs) And I ain't, that's not me. That's not me. I respect it, but that's not me. It don't got nothing to do with me. But you know, we ain't a monolith, right? So we really got to put our mirror up to ourselves. You know what I'm saying? And hold our brethren accountable. I ain't seen nobody check Lil Boosie for the shit he did with his kids or for the shit um, he said about D-Wade and all that shit. As a straight man, you should not be that much in LGBTQ business. You really shouldn't. It's not a good look. Did something happen to you in prison, Boosie? Is that what happened? I'm I'm confused. I'm confused. Because I'm really starting to side eye. If he put that much damn effort into not being a damn pimp for his fucking kids 
And think of the impact that Lil Boosie got. People, when Lil Boosie do shit, people tune in. He could be building com- communities and fucking building businesses for black people and employing black people. But instead, he over here pimping out his kids and worried about what D-Wade doing with his damn uh, child. Fucking sad. Hey, you guys, if you would like to hear the rest of this podcast, please check me out on anchor.fm, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all other podcasting platforms. Thank you for listening.